My name is Flash Isaac and I'm a teacher from the future. When I was much younger, I saw thousands and thousands of people fail jam and unable to gain admission. This made me travel in time. Now I am back with a Flash Letter Jam app and a series on YouTube tagged 120 Days Jam. My mission is to help you blast jam and as well get justice for everyone who jam has served breakfast. So welcome to episode number 105 of the 120 Days to Jam Mathematics with Flash Isaac. In this episode, we shall be looking at area under the curve. This is an application of integration. Don't forget, calculus is a branch of mathematics that studies the relationship between changes in quantities. And the three areas of calculus John is interested in are limits of a function, differentiation, and integration. Why calculus, when it comes to differentiation, involves breaking down something to know what it is made up of. Integration, on the other hand, has to do with bringing together. It is the opposite of differentiation. To get something that has been differentiated, you integrate. Now, what are the areas this integration finds application? Number one is area under curves. In physics, in mathematics, in chemistry, you'll be given a lot of curves cutting across the S axis and the Y axis. Now, what is this area bounded by this curve? Integration can help you find that. Now, you can also find the volume of solids using integration. Apart from that, you can find velocity from acceleration. You can find distance from velocity using integration. If you are given velocity, when you differentiate velocity, you will get acceleration. Now, to get velocity back from acceleration, you integrate acceleration. Look at this. When you differentiate velocity, you will get acceleration. When you integrate acceleration, you will get velocity. When you differentiate distance, you will get velocity. Or when you differentiate displacement, you are going to get velocity. Now, to get the displacement back, you integrate. So, they are the reverse of each other. Jam is concerned about area under the curve when it comes to application of integration. Not just area, Jump stated clearly that simple cases only, meaning don't go to the complex part of finding area bounded by curves. Now, the fourth question here represents what Jump expects you to know when it comes to finding area under curves. Find the area between the curve y is equal sign s and the s axis. Given that s is equals pi and s is equals to pi. When you see questions like this, you do not need to panic. Simply integrate y, then introduce the definite integrals from pi to 2 pi. This is it. Integrate sine a is below pi and above 2 pi. What do you get when you integrate sine theta? When you integrate sine theta, you get minus cos theta. When you integrate sine s, you get minus cos s. So that will simply be minus cos s. 
when you introduce your limit, the lower limit is pi, while the upper limit is two pi. And for definite integrals, you substitute the upper limit, then you subtract from substituting the lower limit. And this will translate to minus cos 2 pi minus this minus is constant, it's in the formula. You can introduce the other part minus cos pi. This is it. And remember, pi is equals 180 degrees. So here is minus cos 360 degrees minus minus cos 180 degrees. That is your answer, and that is what Jan expects. In most cases, even all the cases, Jan will not expect you to know whether the curve is going to where the x-axis or y-axis. No, we just want you to know the area. Look at the second question. Find the area bounded by the curves 4 minus s squared and y is equal to s plus 1. And you'll be told that this area is made with the s axis. The area between these curves and the x axis. So now the area is made within the curve and the x axis, and this is y. This is another y. And if you look at this carefully, we are not given the boundaries. Area under the curve must lead to definite integrals. So, how do we get the boundary? How do we get the lower limit? And how do we get the upper limit? This is what you do. Since this is y and this is another y, y is equal to y. So, 4 minus s squared is equal to 2s plus 1. And this is looking like a quadratic equation. Putting it in standard form, 0 is equal to s squared plus 2s minus 3. Now we look for the roots of this quadratic equation. The roots are s equals 1 or s equals minus 3. With this in mind, and giving us two different equations, we find the area of this and find the area of this and subtract. That would give us the area bounded by the curves. For this curve, you simply integrate 4 minus s squared. 1 is bigger than minus 3. So the upper is 1, the lower is minus 3. Then you subtract from the integral of 2s plus 1, 2s plus 1, the boundary 1, and the limit 3. When you integrate 4, you are going to get 4s. So 4s minus, when you integrate s squared, you are going to get s root to the power of 3 over 3. So here you apply your limit minus three and one. Any answer you are able to get there, subtract it from when you integrate two s, you are going to get s squared s plus when you integrate one, you are going to get s or one s. This is three. Then you apply your limit minus 3 and 1. So anything you get solving here, and whatever you get solving here, subtract them, and that will give you 10 whole number 2 over 3. So square meter, whatever. That is the area under the curve. And this area is made with the s axis. Since the area is made with the s axis, it means y is equal to 0. Now, if y is equal to 0, what is remaining? You will have 0 is equal to s minus 1 and s minus 2. Look at something very carefully. After 
factorizing a quadratic equation and you arrive at something like this, what do you do? You simply say s minus 1 is equal to 0 or s minus 2 is equal to 0. True or true? True. Now, if this is the case, do we agree with me that from here s is equal to 1 and from here s is equal to 2. So these are the limits of this area. S is 1 being the lower limit or the lower boundary, and S equals 2 is the upper limit. We therefore introduce our definite integrals. This is Y, so let us introduce Y to get the area this curve makes with the base values. And this will give me the integral of the function S minus 1. This is 1 and this is 2. There are many ways to integrate this function. But the easiest thing for you to do is to expand this bracket. When you expand, the integral becomes very, very easy instead of going through a very, very long method. How do you open brackets? Of course, this multiplies this, this multiplies this. And this multiplies this, why this also multiplies this? Let's do that. Now, integral of 1, 2, s times s is s here, s times minus 2, that is minus 2 here, minus 1 times s, that is minus here, and minus 1 times minus 2, that is minus 2. So, everything here. Is the same thing as everything here. Let's simplify this a bit to make life easier for us. We therefore arrive at something like this the integral of 1 to s squared minus 3s plus 2 to the s. Integrating, you will have integrating s squared. You have s raised to the power of 3 all over 3. So s is power of 3 over 3. When you integrate minus 3s, you get minus 3s squared over 2. 2. Minus 3s squared over 2. And when you integrate 2, you are going to get 2s. 2 plus 2s. Instead of saying plus c, we remove it because we already have our limit and we are dealing with definite integral. This will give you 1 and this will give you 2. The first thing you do, substitute 2 for everything here. Keep your answer. Then substitute 1 for all the value of s here. Keep your answer. And subscribe, subtract them. If you get this answer, then you are correct. Find the area under the curve y is equal to 2s plus 3 and the coordinates s is equal to 1 and s is equal to 3. Like we've been doing, you simply integrate 2s plus 3, then the limit 1 and 3. Food is ready. When you integrate 2s, you are going to get. 2s squared over 2, and that is s squared. So this is s squared plus 3s with the limit 1 and 3. Substituting the upper part, we have 3 squared plus 3 times 2 minus for the lower part 1 squared plus 3 times 1. Ladies and gentlemen, 3 squared is 9, plus 3 times 3 is 9, minus 1 plus 3. 9 plus 9, is that 18? Yes. 1 plus 3, is that 4? Yes. So everything here should be 14. So the area is 14 units, or 14.
wanting to be or wherever you see action. Ladies and gentlemen, with this, we come to the end of application of integration area under the curve. In the next episode, we will take a quick look at integration by parts. Although I told you it's not a core part of the JAM syllabus, but no, 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 it's weighted. With that, we come to the end of calculus generally. Feel free to get the flash Linux JAM application to play with other topics. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel. Feel free to tell your friends and look at the previous videos. Thank you.